Process Count Doesn't Matter by Zuzer. Well, I gotta say, lower number always better, right? I, I, I saw this article and immediately my, my knee-jerk reaction is just to be like, okay, obviously it matters, but how much? And I really like how this guy broke it down. Now, obviously the title's complete clickbait, but if we dive a little deeper, he might be onto something here about cycles delta and context switching deltas. It basically tells you in ways, programs and services to tell you how heavy they are, how taxing are they to your, to your computer. Instead of obsessing over big, low number in processes, which is fun to do, and I'm definitely guilty of this from time to time, we should be looking at what programs we're using and their impact on the system to actually see what does matter. So while the process count itself isn't like an end-all, be-all, don't just break your system to get the lowest number possible, which a lot of people do, especially with like the, the special windows spins and things like that. You don't want to do that. I always like doing stock windows and then like de-bloating it and making it a fast and pleasurable bare bones experience. But he goes into talking about cycles, even links to like a Tom Scott video here. And I really kind of did a deeper dive in this. And I kind of like the, the thought process here. And it could have probably been laid out a little bit uh, better, but I went ahead and took this methodology and I wanted to kind of say, hey, this is how you can check to see, hey, are these processes worth getting rid of or are they not? Because there's some things in here, specifically, I like to tweak a lot of Windows services. So I wanted to kind of go into each one so we can check them all. And we're specifically going to be using Process Explorer, which is actually a, a Microsoft tool. You can you get it directly off of there or I, it's on the toolbox as well, which I just updated. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up for everyone so you can see exactly what you're doing. You're just adding. You can just right click the column, say select columns and then just add these deltas. This is going to tell you how uh, taxing those processes are. And he did a couple different methods of, of it today where he spawned 3,000 using as many cycles as possible, or actually he made his own program using as many as he could, and that obviously crashed his system or locked it up. And then he spawned 3,000, I think it was like Discord processes or something of that nature, to uh, show that, hey, a lot of processes that sleep won't use any cycles, and therefore killing them it's not really going to give you any performance for video games and i was like okay that's a cool uh a cool article interesting and very thought provoking so uh going from the the first iteration to now i was like okay let's actually do this let's actually pull it up i got a process or this is process explorer we went ahead and added those cycles now i i've obviously have some of these you have system and system idle processes, which will take up a good chunk of it. You can't do anything with your registry or system idle processes to really bring these deltas down. So those are obviously going to always have a huge chunk, but there's going to be something like when in it. This is where a lot of your services are belonging. A lot of the tweaks in my Windows utility is basically stopping these from running. And the ones that you really got to look at are the ones taking all the deltas and or taking a good chunk of them. And what we can do now, and just to show this, if you go to services.msc, with this up, we can actually look through, obviously I've already run my toolbox, but these are the things running in the background. A lot of these running ones will actually show up under the wininit.exe in Process Explorer. So if you see something in here taking a bunch of deltas, we can actually look at the process itself and go, okay, is that actually needed? So like text input management service, if that took up a lot, if you go to properties, you can actually spine the executable. This is gonna be under SVC host. It looks like a nested process, which we can look at. But most of the stuff on my toolbox goes ahead and it sets it to manual. So a lot of these things, uh, specifically like diagnostic workflows and some telemetry services that don't do it, access reporting. What I find with Windows 10 and Windows 11 is telemetry will not show deltas a lot of times, but then when it goes to submit and collect the data, it will just spike and, and really redline your CPU really fast. It can be very, very aggressive. And that's just bad Microsoft logic or whoever's programming the telemetry up there. It, 
it can get really, really egregious. I, and I noticed it from just a blank desktop where I was just browsing around and all of a sudden I hear my CPU going crazy and I notice things start to get a little laggy. I'm like, okay, something's up with that. And a lot of times that can be telemetry in Windows 10 and 11. So it can be very aggressive. But other things here too to notice is like Steam, client service, and those types of things. Let's check to see how heavy they are uh, because a lot of gamers out there have 10 launchers just sitting in their uh, task tray and they don't realize some of those are not going to sleep. A lot of them are very active and they actually take up a lot of uh, your CPU. So we'll check all that too. I just wanted to kind of showcase this so we can look through here and go, hey, what what's happening here? Like phone service. Obviously, this is not something I use. And you can see it's not taking up a whole lot of Delta. So it's not something that we have to worry about that much. Let's find something a little bit more egregious. Now we have Power Toys. You can see that is taking up something. And an always on top tweak does look like it, it pops in here quite often and it does take up a good chunk. And you can see it's constantly spiking in the hundreds on the context switches, which would, you know, maybe, maybe remove that from Power Toys or we disable it. Uh, you know, these are just thoughts as you go through here. NVIDIA, you'll notice NVIDIA is not really taking up too much right here because I used NV Clean Install. I'll link a, a video about me doing that. I still recommend NV Clean Install, even though a lot of people have been mentioning the new NVIDIA service to install NVIDIA drivers. It is a lot better than the old GeForce experience, but it's still pretty gnarly when it comes to how, how big the footprint is. NV Clean Install is still my recommended method on that. And then you'll notice, oh, wow, what's this one? It's got 2,000 looking glass. Well, that that's that that's actually just displaying the entire thing and copying every single frame in here to my Linux workstation, which is what I'm on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's obviously going to take up a lot of CPU time. Here's another one that's, uh, man, that's pretty steady, taking up a lot of context switches. Ah, MSMP ENG. What is that? That's a Windows Defender. Any kind of antivirus is extremely taxing on a system. So much more, a lot of times people don't realize, a lot of times the viruses are less taxing than the antivirus themselves. So antivirus can be very, very taxing. So for people out there that install multiple antiviruses, have fun with your slow computer. That's another thing this this definitely shows. And honestly, this is not even during a scan too. So very watch out for this. It can be get really egregious. And another thing you'll see is like Microsoft Edge. Uh, one thing people don't realize about Windows, a lot of times Microsoft Edge is always running. Like I'm obviously not using Edge. I have like a Thorium right here. And if we pull it up, how much is it taking? Let's just bundle all those processes up. You can see. It's taking up a good bit, but parts of Microsoft Edge are still left on the system. They still do take up some of its resources. So these are things to look at, um, like getting rid of security hell SysTray. You think that would bother and, and cause things? We could probably get rid of that. It's not taking up too much space, but all these things take up a little bit. So does process count matter? You know, getting back to the original reason why you click on the video. Yes but don't not all processes are created the same and it really depends on how much of the deltas they're using as far as context switching and cycles and how how aggressive those programs are uh, i find antivirus absolutely the most taxing so be careful of those those resident things steam you can see right here it's it's pretty taxing too running all those game launchers there's game launchers are doing a lot in the background close them out having them all just sitting in your system tray i you know if we do battle net we do all these other ones they don't sleep all that well they're, they're they can be very very taxing as well and uh other programs that are constantly monitoring anything that has active monitoring on it is going to be using a lot of your cpu and slowing your system down and when you're going through the services look for really aggressive services like indexer is another one that you know, that's that's when you, you hit your start menu and type in Steam. Well, that indexer is what really pulls in the Steam. And when we do that, you'll notice though that indexer is eating up a lot. And this is true on any system, you know, if it's Spotlight in Mac or if you're in 
Linux, it's like blue on KDE and all these other indexers. Search indexers can be very aggressive too. So you got to watch out for all these things. A lot of them are active monitoring or things that are going to be actively doing things. Telemetry also can be pretty egregious at times, but a lot of times telemetry is like, hey, it'll fire off every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes. So if you notice big frame drops in your game every 15 to 30 minutes, well, there's probably a program that's running behind uh, that is actually gobbling up those resources, causing that slowdown. And I thought this was kind of a, a just a neat way to kind of come through and kind of wrap our brains around processes. Big number doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing, but it just depends on those processes. It's what's in the number that you got to watch out for. I still stand by you want a lower number for sure. Less things running is always a good thing, but don't do it to a point where you're like, hey, I got to kill every process. Get down to a, a 17 up here. Ah, <laughs> while it's cool, it doesn't necessarily mean good performance. So I can appreciate the 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 nature of this article, and and I'll leave a link to it if you want to check it out and watch Tom Scott's video on how like CPUs uh, work and how the cycles work. I think that's kind of interesting, uh, but it, it's very very cool to see these types of things, and and I I, I love to try to educate on how this affects your computer. And this can be true. Uh, I might do another one of these on Linux. Let me know. Uh, Linux not definitely doesn't have nearly the resource uses that, you know, old Windows has. You saw kind of what it was doing. But if we just do that, you can see this is how much is going on here. And I could probably do like a context uh, cycling over here just so we could kind of get a good feel for how much is this one actually using? And, and most of my resources right here, obviously, uh, QMU and Looking Glass, which, again, well, that that that's just just my Windows. When Windows just is such a CPU hog. <laughs> so with that, guys, let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you in the next one.